London last Wednesday to a thousand people, an auditorium of a thousand people. I went out after doing my speech, and the first thing I said was, where's the loo? Uh, little did I know that you can broadcast to a thousand people. <laughs> uh, I suppose it could have been worse. I could have got to the loo uh, before they, before they realised. Uh, so, uh, this is a leadership election, and uh, I can confidently predict that this is an election which will be won by a Liberal Democrat. <laughs> uh, you can all be Thank you. That is the first of very many. It's the first of very many. And I wanted to also say, just before I get into the main uh, contribution I want to make, that I reckon, recognise that the last five years has been extraordinarily painful for this party and for very many people fighting and winning elections in their communities and then losing elections through absolutely no fault of their own. I, I recognise that completely. Uh, and I understand the pain that people feel and suffer as a result of losing in those circumstances. And it seems to me that it is up to all of us collectively, and incidentally, whoever wins this election, we are united. We must be united as a party to fight to win back that liberal voice in our country. There is no place for divisions, splits of anything of that sort. We must unite around whoever prevails in this leadership election. Now, um, before you make up your mind uh, as to who to vote for, you will want to know what my motivation is, what drives me, what I'm about as an individual. You'll want to know what my ambition is uh, for this party, and you'll want to know how I intend to try to achieve that ambition. So let me tell you, first of all, a bit about me. Well, Way back in 1987, I won my seat for the first time on Norwich City Council. Uh, it was a ward which uh, had been Conservative and then Labour. We had been in third place and we prevailed and we ended up with every single member in that ward as a Liberal and then a Liberal Democrat. We got to the point in that uh, ward where both myself and my wife Mary were councillors, Mary was a county councillor, and then we had a by-election and I'm not just them. And we, <laughs> so we ended up with three councillors in the house and you can imagine the amount of paperwork that came through our letterbox every single day. So I am at heart a grassroots campaigner. I then took on North Norfolk uh, constituency, 15,500 votes behind conservatives, and an 11-year battle, call me a sad man, uh, but 11-year battle and finally we prevailed with a majority of 483, creeping over the finishing line in 2001, but then building a majority and holding it ever since. And so for me, grassroots campaigning and the principle of community politics is at the heart of everything we should do. I want to say a bit more about that in a moment. But throughout my adult life, I have tried to live out my liberal values. So Long before I was uh, elected to Parliament, as a lawyer, I took on the MOD uh, on behalf of 5,500 women who had been discharged from the armed forces for getting pregnant. The MOD had acted in breach of the Equal Treatment Directive, and we took them on and won compensation for those women who had been unlawfully discharged. As a new MOD in Parliament, I took on Tony Blair. I wanted to know who he had been meeting in the run-up to the Iraq war, who had been influencing him. So I asked the question about who he'd been meeting at Chequers, and the answer inevitably came back, we don't answer that question. So I challenged him, and it, after a long battle, it led to a groundbreaking decision which established the really important principle that every citizen in our country is entitled to know who the Prime Minister meets, who every minister in the government meets, so that we know who is influencing them. I have to say, when I then became a minister, and I was told I had to give details of every meeting I attended, uh, I realised that, of course, that was my responsibility, but you have to live by what you believe in. Uh, and then as a campaigning minister in the Department of Health, fighting for the fundamental principle for me, that people suffering from mental ill health must have equal access to treatment equal access to evidence-based treatment as anyone else. 
And there is a scandal, really, a discrimination at the heart of our NHS, that if you suffer from mental ill health, you don't have the same right of access to treatment. So how can it be right that if you suffer from suspected cancer, you have a right to an appointment with a specialist within two weeks, and rightly so. But if you're a youngster who suffers a first episode of psychosis, something that can literally change your life, and ruin your life and lead to a miserable life, probably on benefits, probably with difficult relationships. You have no right, no right at all, to access treatment on a timely basis. So that's why I'm incredibly proud that we introduced the first ever waiting time standards, maximum waiting time standards, including for early intervention in psychosis, to give youngsters in particular the chance of a good life, to rescue lives to ensure that they can enjoy life just as any of the rest of us can. And we introduced it from April of this year. But in all of my work as a minister, I came across so many cases where families and individuals were treated as second-class citizens, too often ignored by the system, not listened to. I heard families say to me, we're really concerned about our son or daughter who's been put in an institution have possibly hundreds of miles away from home. And when we raise concerns, nobody listens to us. So I would take on those cases on behalf of individuals and fight to ensure that commissioners actually listen to people. <coughs> this is, for me, at the heart of my liberalism, but not just to take on individual cases, to come up with new proposals for rights for people, to challenge decisions, and to have control over the money that's available for your care. And I will hold the Tories to account to implement those new rights in this parliament. It's essential uh, that they do. And that sense of powerful citizens, everyone treated equally, goes through all of my <coughs> values as a liberal. So Labour councils, for example, do things to people in communities. Liberal, Liberal Democrat councils empower people in their communities. That's what we are about when we are at our best. We give people power control over their destiny as communities and as individuals. And this country is one of the most centralised of any in Western Europe, apart from incidentally Malta, which uh, I think has a, probably a justification for raising more tax uh, than any other country because of the size of that uh, particular country. But apart from Malta, we are the most centralised. So I argue for radical decentralisation of power, not just to run services, but where the money is raised, because that is where the power resides. And that again is at the heart of my liberalism, giving power to local authorities in charge of communities, giving power to communities. And it's that sense of the powerful citizen against the state that makes us absolutely determined to protect as far as we can the Human Rights Act against the assault from this Conservative government. We must be at the front of that campaign to safeguard the Human Rights Act, which gives that power to individuals against the overbearing state. But along with that sense of powerful individuals, we must always celebrate diversity, we must reject conformity, and we must be intolerant of discrimination, of disadvantage, of entrenched poverty, wherever we see it. And then there is the central principle for liberals, surely, that every child in our country should have the same right to flourish as individuals, to make the very most of their talents in life. And it is a sad reflection of our country that still there are too many children whose futures are determined by the circumstances of their birth. That's why the pupil premium is so potentially transformational. It changes individual children's lives. It gives them the chance, perhaps for the first time ever, to make a real go of things, to uh, succeed as every other child can. And it's tragic that the Conservatives now are talking about undermining a transformational policy that we introduced in government as Liberal Democrats. And then on top of all of that, along with freedom, comes responsibility. Responsibility to one another in our communities. Responsibility for the proper stewardship of our planet. And responsibility to future generations. These things are at the heart of what we are about as Liberals, and we must always fight for those values.
So what is my ambition for the party? Well, I want us to think big. The world has changed completely. Change happens incredibly fast these days in politics. Look at the rise of the SNP <coughs> and the UK. It changes rapidly in commerce as well. Household names on the high street, here one day, gone the next. Startups that suddenly catch fire and reach out to a massive audience and become very successful almost overnight. And I want us to think of ourselves in that light. Startups with a massive potential audience because this is a liberal age. There are so many people out there <coughs> who share our values but who don't at the moment associate themselves with the Liberal Democrats. Our task as we build a liberal progressive, radical movement of change is to reach out to those people and to convince them that this is the party that speaks to their values. Let's be audacious, let's be ambitious, let's believe that the Liberal Democrats can get into government in our own right. Let's not set a time scale, but let's let that be the ambition. Because there is no point in what we do unless we grab power in our communities and local government and nationally so that we can make a difference to people's lives. That must be what we are about, and we must be ambitious to achieve that objective. So how do we do it? Let me take you through the steps that we need to take. First of all, I believe we need root and branch reform of the way our party operates. I don't think if we're honest, we always apply our <coughs> values to the way in which our party operates and behaves. There are too many committees that I get confused about myself. It leads to unaccountable power. We are not diverse. We are the least diverse party in our country. That, for Liberals, should be completely intolerable. We must make sure that everyone in our party is valued and has the chance to make a success of things within our party. And I want everyone involved in the policy-making process. So our democracy as a party it's based on the idea that you go to the conference in September and then in, in March the following year. But these days, we can link everyone up electronically to our conference. And we can give everyone, all those new members that have joined our party, the chance to vote in key decisions about policy making at our party conference by linking them up electronically. Surely we should be leading the way in our internal democracy so that we give every member the chance to have, our, have their say. And then secondly, we must again become a really effective election-winning machine. The truth is that we've fallen behind the curve nationally. Other parties have overtaken us. There's a wealth of skills in our party, including here in this room today. But it seems to me we must, across the country, return to our values of fighting uh, to give power to people through the principle, the genuine principle, of community politics. That must be the way in which we go back to winning elections again. It's the way I won elections myself, giving power to our communities, and it's the way very many of you in this room will have got power yourselves in your communities. Third, I want our party to become an intellectual powerhouse. Just think back to Joe Grimmer, those of you who are old enough like me to remember Joe Grimmer, that radical liberal in the 60s. He was ambitious for us. He got thinkers, big thinkers, from outside the party to come in to think about liberal solutions to the big challenges of that age. We need to do the same. We can't run on empty. We've got to win the battle of ideas. Let's think big. Let's get a liberal movement, a dynamic movement going again so that we come up with the liberal responses to the big challenges that we face as a society today. And let me tell you this, if we can combine winning the battle of ideas with really effective campaigning, then we can become an unstoppable force. But you need both. And then finally, we've got to reach out to young people. Young people are overwhelmingly liberal in their attitudes. They think in a liberal way. They don't like the old ways of doing things. They, want, they, they, they are international, they're dynamic, they're open in their attitudes. They want reform of the antiquated drug laws, which criminalise so many people in our country, which hand billions of pounds to criminal networks across our world. They want equal access to mental health services. They want a party that will lead the case 
uh, to uh, combat the challenge of climate change. They want liberal solutions to our housing crisis. They want opportunity to achieve for themselves in life. We can be that party. We can be the party that inspires a new generation of young people, just like in the 60s, where 2,000 people attended young liberal conferences in those days. We can get back to that. And if we inspire a generation of young people, then our future will be secured. So let me end by just telling you this. There was a young liberal youth student who said to me recently about my work on mental health, particularly focus on, focusing on young people's mental health. She said, you have restored my faith in politics. Now that meant an awful lot to me because what I'm about is getting stuck in, trying to make a difference to people's lives, having an effect by the work that you do. And when she said that to me, it made me realise that we had achieved some really important things in government. But we, Liberal Democrats, can inspire and restore everyone's faith in politics by telling it straight, by telling it as it is, by speaking from our hearts, speaking to our values as Liberals. And if we do that, and if we are really ambitious, we can succeed. Together, we can succeed. We can get this party back into government. That must be our ambition if we want to make a difference to people's lives. Thank you very much indeed.